the first slide is the new revised safe harbor agreement. Uh, if you've been to Oracle Talks before, and I recognize a lot of faces, you're used to our safe harbor agreement. Uh, if you haven't seen one of these before, basically, if I'm talking about something that hasn't released yet, uh, take it with a grain of salt. I don't have perfect knowledge of future product releases, and if I'm saying something's blue, I'm thinking sky blue, you're thinking navy blue, and Oracle turns out blue cheese. And uh, for those of you who are fans of these things, um, this is the new wording of it, and it is much different than the old one. Okay, this is a talk on foreign key support in MySQL 8.0. And uh, it's also known as Dev 2054. Uh, by the way, if you have questions, we have a microphone here. We'd like to record them for posterity. Uh, so if you do have questions, please go up the microphone and don't be shy. Uh, right after this talk is the State of the Dolphin keynote. Uh, this is where there's going to be some big announcements about MySQL. Um, some really, really big ones that I'd love to be able to blab about right now. They're really exciting. And uh, that's downstairs in 207-208 uh, with Rich Mason, who's our, our uh, a benevolent leader, uh, Thomas Ulan, who's our uh, chief engineer, and uh, Napoon, who is running the RAPID project, which if you haven't heard about, is a very interesting analytics online cloud uh, uh, piece of code. Second thing. Uh, how many of you are, are new to the MySQL experience? Okay, well, congratulations. You're now part of the MySQL community, and we'd love to have you at our party. Uh, it's free. It's tomorrow night. It's open to anyone. It's at the Samovar Wine Bar. Uh, if you want to talk shop, you can. If you don't want to talk shop, we have food and drink. And uh, it's a very, uh, very fun, relaxed evening. Uh, it sometimes gets cool because it starts at 7 p.m. and the sun's going down. But it's a very good event, and welcome to the MySQL community. Uh, we're, if you have any questions, uh, don't be shy. And the only trouble is, once you get us talking, we're very hard to shut up. Uh, the original proposer of this talk was Stale Deras. Um, he is uh, one of our engineering team gods. He is a very smart man, very dynamic, and a much better present presenter than I am. But unfortunately, he can't make it today, so I uh, was asked to take over his talk, and Stali actually sent me three slides worth of information. And uh, you'll see all those in their glory in a little bit. And um, I am very much a second-rate fill-in. If you have questions on foreign keys that I can't answer, which is not a hard bar uh, to reach, uh, I will take that information to Stali and ask to get a question. I'll grab your business card, and I'll email you with the answer. Uh, the slides, by the way, have been uploaded to the Oracle site. I'll also put them up on my slide share and uh, get that. So what is a foreign key? Well, it's not actually a key to a foreign car. It's actually keys between tables. Uh, it's a type of pointer where you have one row in table A that points to entries in table B. Uh, it uh, defines the relationship. And in relational databases, that's what we want, lots of lovely relationships. Uh, by the way, I. I tease the NoSQL developers that I know by saying that we actually enjoy having relations with our tables and our data. Uh, in addition to labeling fast lookup of uh, information for keys, also enforce some data integrity. And uh, this is actually a constraint. Uh, we recently got check constraints in 8016, which we had ignored for a long time, but we now actually have those out there. And uh, in some cases, foreign keys are a pain because you're trying to insert a value, but there's no master out there or no parent and it's trying to go into the child table. Uh, it can be kind of frustrating, but it does have its benefits, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, you can set it up so that if a, a row is deleted or changed, the rows in the parent from the parent table, those changes will cascade down into the child tables. Uh, very handy for, for those of us who are lazy coders who don't actually want to go out and update the three tables with, with one statement. Uh, you can actually know that if you're doing an update on the parent child that, that that change will also flow down into the child table. Now, the original goal of SQL when Edgar Codd was starting out was to get rid of data duplication. Disk space was slow and very expensive. So if you had it duplicated out there, that kind of double against you. Uh, foreign keys let you get around that. 
And here's the actual syntax for, for, for uh, foreign keys when you're creating tables. Um, as you can see that you um, name the foreign key as a name and then whatever um, column name it is in the other table. And you can have actions on updates or deletes. And the options are, you know, restrict, cascade, set it to null, do nothing. And uh, you can um, basically tell the server how to handle the changes that happen to the, the child table from what happens to the, par the parent table. Now here's a very simple example. Uh, if you're used to the SQL world, I, th this is a very simple example, and I apologize for it being so basic, but it, uh, I talk to a lot of developers who really don't know SQL, and it helps to have very simple explanations at the, fr at the first. On the left there, we have a parent table. Uh, very simple, we have an ID, which you'll see in red, and we've decided to uh, make that the primary key of our table. Now on the right-hand side, we have the child table, and in blue, we say, okay, we're gonna have a foreign key that we're gonna call parent underscore ID, which references the parent table and the field in the parent table. And if we get rid of something from the parent table, we'll cause something to trigger that will actually delete the child table. Have I lost anyone there? Good. Now, um, this is another example. Uh, once again, we have a very simple parent table, uh, two columns, uh, the ID again, and a name. And we're gonna have a kids, a p child table we're gonna call kids, and we're gonna have a kid ID, uh, the parent ID, the kid name, and we're gonna uh, set up an index on the parent ID. And once again, we have the foreign key on parent ID, which references the parent table's ID field. And if there's a deletion, we'll cascade that. So if you like EER diagrams, this is what we've set up. This is from MySQL Workbench. If you haven't played with this, this is our free tool that's a query builder, uh, reverse engineering tool, admin tool, uh, monitoring system. And it, one of the things that we'll do is draw diagrams like this for you. So let's insert some data into uh, the, the parent table. We're gonna have uh, three records uh, for Tom, Mary, and JT. And we actually put in some data for the July table, which is omitted here. But as you can see, uh, parent ID of one for Tom, uh, parent ID of two for Mary. You can see there's just one child for Mary and three children for good old JT there. Now, I can do a select where I'm getting the parent name and the kid name, and I'm joining on the parent ID to the, uh, uh, to the kid table. So we get a full list of all the kids. You notice that once again, Tom has two, Mary has one, and JT has three. If I delete from the parent table where ID equals one, we're getting everything from the Tom records and we're just wiping them out. Um, as you can see afterwards, we do a search, Tom is no longer listed, nor are his kids. The, the big thing here to notice is that we did not directly delete the kid records for Tom, that the cascade for our table definition did that for us. Now, referential, this is, the next couple slides are things that happened before MySQL 8.0, so 5.7 and earlier. Um, Used to be previously the referential checks were handled by the storage engines, uh, as was the data definition language, and the metadata is stored in the, was stored in the storage engine. Um, also, the information for foreign keys and the show create table was coming from the the storage engine level, and uh, the SQL level calls to get foreign key info in some cases, once again, came from the, the storage engine. Now, one of the issues we had with this is that the cascading issues were not extremely obvious. You couldn't find them often unless you uh, went hunting for them. Uh, oftentimes we had trouble with the triggers not being called to do the, the cascading work uh, because the storage engine did not have triggers enabled. And it was 
problematic for group replication and for right to for parallel write sets. Uh, there's some things going on with replication that uh, I'm not sure if we're announcing this week or not that um, I won't say write arounds for this pro sort of problems, but they really greatly enhance replication speed when it doesn't have to worry about a lot of these issues. And also before 8.0, um, part of the data was done in the storage engine, part was actually done in the server, and it was kind of messy. And also before 8.0, the information schema informa uh, data was hard to get to. Uh, this is, uh, we have performance schema and information schema that holds the metadata about your running server and what's going on there. And the metadata locking really didn't know anything about foreign keys. It was more dependent on the storage engine. Now, with ADO, with the release we came out with a, a year and a half ago, the metadata for foreign keys is stored in the data dictionary. It's actually in the database itself. And the, the locking actually knows how to get to that information. It doesn't have to rely on the storage engine. The, um, also in 8.0, um, and then also a change in 8.0.13 for uh, the status is that the data definition language is actually held in both the SQL and the storage engine layers. Uh, make sure that the server's a lot smarter about any foreign keys that you're running. And the referential checks are still handled by the storage engine, but the data dictionary has some smarts about it. Also with 8.0, um, the information schemas are simple views over the data dictionary. So you don't have to go out and hunt down to the storage engine level. It's all out there in the data dictionary. Now, this is the stuff that Stolly sent me, uh, the plans and stuff that they're planning to do. Uh, some of this we were hoping to have out in 8018, which is coming out hopefully next 60 days, uh, roughly, hopefully 30 days. Uh, some of it might fall to 8019, 20, or 21. Uh, by the way, we do major releases every three months, so there's four a year. So by this time next year, all the stuff I'm talking about should be in the server. Uh, once again, take that with a grain of salt. Um, all the cascading actions are going to go to the SQL layer. Uh, this will solve a lot of problems with existing triggers and uh, the checks will still have to be done in the storage engine. Uh, better syntax support. Uh, in the past, MySQL has been criticized for not following always the SQL standards, but now we're getting a lot better on that. So you're gonna find a lot of things like the uh, implicit reference column list uh, taken care of. Uh, also in 8.0, we're planning, to, in future releases 8.0, we're planning to get rid of a lot of legacy code. Uh, a lot of the stuff from the first 24 years of MySQL has a lot of cruft and uh, debris left over from earlier versions. And now that we have the true data dictionary, we're able to do things a lot smarter and be able to tailor ourselves to get closer to what everyone wants. Now, DDL statement parsing is still going to be done in NODB because that's something that's more akin to what the storage engine needs to know versus what the actual uh, engine has to do, the, the server. So the, the beginning of the summary here is that we keep evolving stuff. Um, Stolly originally had a lot of stuff that we hoped to be able to uh, be showing off this week, but unfortunately not. Uh, if you find any problems with foreign keys, let me know. I'll get that information out to Stale, and we'll um, we'll take quick action on any bugs that you find. Now, for those of you who are developers and not used to SQL, you'll hear a bunch of stuff in the past that please don't use MySQL foreign keys. They're inefficient. They don't work, and they'll do a lot of um, heavy lifting around foreign keys. But I can tell you, in 8.0, I've been using them for two years now with no problems. Uh, they are very robust, and I haven't had any problem with them. So with that, uh, I want to thank you, and we'll do Q&A if there's any in a minute. Um, I've been asked to uh, ask you to use the mobile app on your phone to rate the session and keep track of the various sessions during the day. And once again, uh, this is the ending safe harbor that they want us uh, to, to do. And with that, let me go way back to the 
one about the session right after this. To remind you how to get there. And with that, are there any questions or concerns, comments? By the way, if you don't know Mr. Rick here and you've gone out to forums.myscale.com and you've asked a question, um, nine times out of ten, he's the first person to answer it. So he is a, <laughs> a good man. I've always said the overhead of having someone take care of the leaving the child table for you while you're dealing with the parent table helps more developers than it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. There. Thank you, Rick. It's it's one of those things where. Um, it's very frustrating, especially when you have the websites like Stack Overflow and someone's trying to do something with MySQL that you really can't do with a relational database, you can't do with standard physics, and you can't really do without some sort of superhero power. But uh, they're, they're doing it with Node. Yay! That's what it's about. Well, if, if there's nothing else, I want to thank you for coming out. Uh, once again, I apologize for um, not having Stali here with the, the real low inside tech information on the solid core of the, the system. Uh, once again, State of the Dolphin, we have some big announcements there. Um, one in performance level that I think is going to blow some socks off people if they're wearing socks. So you're wearing socks, so uh, that's good. And once again, welcome to the MySkill community, and make sure you make the party tomorrow night if you can. And with that, thank you very much, and have a great open world.